In a follow-up story from yesterday, the conspiracy to take down progressive Democratic candidate Alex Morse gets even crazier. Our friend Brian Grimm continues to be on the beat and has an incredible new story alongside Owen Higgins and Daniel Bogoslaw. Massachusetts Democratic Party leaders helped coach and orchestrate the homophobic smear campaign against Morse in coordination with UMass Amherst College Democrats. This new revelation comes after The Intercept revealed that these college students tried to coax Morse into doing something inappropriate, which he didn't do, all for the purpose of getting an internship with Richie Neal, the incumbent, his opponent, and then release the smear job anyway. Just days after Mayor Alex Morse was accused of having sexual relationships with college students, the LGBTQ Victory Fund is standing behind him. This is a disservice to voters who want a progressive member of Congress, but now only have time to make a decision based on vague and anonymous accusations. While some are supporting Morse, others are demanding his resignation. It's not, wrong, it's not right in any case, but as, as a politician, we're supposed to be setting an example out there in the community and what has been set is a bad example. A bad example to have consensual relationships with people around your age, Morse is 31 years old, when he was a guest lecturer at a college when he was the mayor and often didn't tell people he was hooking up with or dating that he was the mayor so there wouldn't be that power imbalance, that's makes him unelectable. He could have all the right positions on Medicare for all, college for all, a Green New Deal, ending our imperialist structure. But no, he hooked up with people around his own age, own age in his town in Massachusetts, but he was a guest lecturer there. So <gasps> power imbalance. It's ridiculous. I mean, I'm not putting it all on this guy. This is how smear campaigns work. You just hear these vague accusations and then that person, they must have really done something bad, they're automatically disqualified. He just seems like a regular human being that lives in the area. But I hope that this has gotten enough national attention, and at least from online leftists, that potentially there's some pushback because it's just ridiculous. So when reading this story yesterday, I was pretty shocked at the arrogance of these college kids, the way that they spoke so cavalierly about taking Morse's campaign down and that they had the gall to do it. But it sounds like, and it makes sense now with this reporting, that it wasn't just them acting on their own, which puts the arrogance into perspective. As Ryan Grimm and others at The Intercept have revealed, looks like the state Massachusetts Democratic Party was behind a lot of this. As the congressional primary in Massachusetts' first district turned into a national story following allegations of misconduct against Holyoke Mayor Alex Morse, the state Democratic Party declined to weigh in, citing its policy to remain neutral in contested primaries. Ah, but behind the scenes, the state party had been coordinating with the College Democrats of Massachusetts to launch those very allegations, according to five sources within the state party and connected to the CDMA, and a review of messages between party leadership and the leadership of the CDMA. The documents show that the Massachusetts Democratic Party's executive director, Victoria Martinez, and chair Gus Bickford connected the students with attorneys, among them the powerful state party figure and attorney Jim Roosevelt, who worked with the college group on a letter alleging Morse behaved inappropriately. On Thursday morning, in the wake of the revelation, Politico reported that Bickford was calling for an investigation to examine the conduct of college Democrats who leveled the allegations against Morse. They turned to the state party to help them. They thought they'd protect them, but instead the state party is trying to destroy them, one member of the Democratic State Committee, or DSC, told The Intercept. Martinez reached out to CDMA members repeatedly by phone and text from at least late July up to and including Thursday record show. In text messages reviewed by The Intercept, Martinez takes an active role in directing the group on the strategy behind the letter before and after its release, including coaching on how to interact with the press. On Thursday, the College Democrats po uh, posted a statement that apologized to Morse, adding, we wrote the letter to Alex Morse's campaign on the advice of legal counsel, but did not specify who that counsel was. The grandson of FDR, attorney Jim Roosevelt, is a major power broker within the state and national Democratic parties and contributed to Neal's campaigns in 2008 and 2016, giving $1,000 and $500 respectively, according to records filed with the FEC. 
He has a history of tangling with the Bernie Sanders aligned wing of the party. In 2016, he chaired the Democratic National Convention's Credentials Committee, rejecting Sanders' formal request to remove Barney Frank as the chair of the Rules Committee after the Vermont senator deemed the former lawmaker too hostile to Sanders and his agenda. It, that was true. A year later, Roosevelt publicly rebuffed the suggestion by Senator Elizabeth Warren that members of the DNC had tilted the presidential playing field towards Hillary Clinton's campaign. A former CEO for health insurance, insurance giant Tufts Health Plan, Roosevelt will once again co-chair the Credentials Committee next week at the DNC. So just to review there, the Massachusetts Democratic Party leader who connected them with attorneys is leading an investigation into their misconduct. And that attorney is a massive power broker, health insurance giant executive who publicly sabotages Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and progressives at every turn he can get, and is a major player in the National Party. I'm starting to believe that Richie Neal knew about this. More reporting needs to be done, but this is unbelievable. It's a real life conspiracy, a homophobic conspiracy, because the Democratic Party knows the implications of what you say about a gay man and how guys like in that interview, again, I'm not trying to pick on him, might be a little bit quicker to jump on, oh, he's a deviant, than if it was a straight man doing it or a woman doing it. They know the weight behind this kind of propaganda and they did it anyway, why? To preserve Richie Neal, one of the biggest pro pharma, anti-Medicare for all, corrupt Democrats in the House. N not a coincidence that a health insurance giant executive was the attorney that helped them in this area. It's sick. Massachusetts Democratic Party establishment is rotten. New York, we see it with Cuomo. A lot of breakthroughs there with Julia Salazar and other great progressives that have broken through. But there is corruption upon corruption in these huge state Democratic parties and they pretend to be above it all. And then they smear Alex Morse like this in a coordinated campaign, embarrassing. And they wonder why Trump's drain the swamp message was effective. And then turn around and do things like this. Swamp, revolting, bigoted, messed up, and all to protect someone who just wants to prevent people from having health care. <laughs> uh, but they're all friends and it's one big club and we're not in it, but Alex Morse Hopefully he breaks down that door with his foot, knocks it down. Let's go.